Hi friends, Pastor Terry here. We are Okotoks Alliance Church and this is the 10 Minute Coach. I want to take you back into John chapter 2. Uh, we were there Sunday, uh, January 28th. Um, and and uh, in that message I focused predominantly on the first 12 verses uh, from John chapter 2, uh, which is the account of the wedding in Cana, uh, which uh, I'm going to try quickly to just recap that and to say, uh, what a lovely thing, right? Jesus shows up at this wedding, blesses this couple, uh, this family, this community. Um, God loves weddings. Isn't that lovely? Um, but there's so much more going on here than meets the eye. And that's where I, I tried to help us find our way into uh, some of that more uh, that John intends us to, to, to mine, to dig, to, to figure out, to, 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 to say, wow, what is, what's that about? Um, and, and so one of them is just the, the, the way weddings are referenced throughout the pages of Scripture, from Genesis through Revelation. Uh, Genesis chapter 2, we start with a wedding. God makes Eve for Adam, brings her to him. We have the first wedding sanctioned by God. Uh, we, we come to the end, uh, Revelation chapter 19, and we have this culmination of, of history coming together in the, the end times, the eschaton, if that word slips out from me, eschaton, eschatology, E-S-C. This is talking about end times um, and and. The, the, the hope and the expectation that we have uh, that, that this world is not all that we have, but uh, God is going to wrap this all up and we have this e e enormous, wonderful, eternal hope that we refer to as the eschaton. So there's this wedding banquet of the, of the lamb, the, the, the bride, his church, joined to him. And this, this becomes part of a really significant metaphor, um, which then we we come to the, the middle of the, the scriptures, John chapter 2, and Jesus' ministry is launched at a wedding. Well, this has got to mean something significant to us. And I've given you a bunch of passages of scripture on the, the back of uh, the, the, your, your sermon notes. Uh, there are links there if you've got the PDF file that you've downloaded from our website uh, that will give you lots of things to dig into as we as we look at how these uh, these greater, broader biblical texts reference the idea of wedding. Well, well, attached to wedding is celebration. Attached to celebration is the idea of joy. And, uh, and we get this idea in Nehemiah uh, that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Well, it's a beautiful invitation for us to examine ourselves as followers of Jesus and say, are we people of joy? Is the joy of the Lord showing up in my life? And Jesus introduces uh, this idea that, that the, the wedding celebration ought to be a joy-filled celebration with this enormously generous gift of, uh, of wine. Uh, six uh, huge vats used for ceremonial washing. Um, we're, we're talking like 120 gallons of wine that has been given uh, to them. It, it's, it's generous. It's overflowing. It's, it's well, it's, it, uh, I grew up. I grew up in a, a teetotal uh, home. Um, uh, the, the, the there's all kinds of kind of nervousness around overconsumption of of alcohol, and, and yet uh, there's there's some kind of generosity here, an invitation into joy. I don't believe it's an invitation into you know ex excessive consumption of alcohol. And yet there's some kind of thing that, that God's not afraid of, that I am afraid of, that, that I am nervous about at least. And, and, and maybe you have grew up in a similar kind of environment and this makes you similarly nervous. And, and there's something about the generosity of God being stirred here that we're invited into uh, and an exuberance that, that ah, man, I, I want to hold onto the reins. I don't want to let go. Uh, and, and yet, and yet he's inviting us into some, you know, kind of a, additional celebration. Um, I, I, I don't have words yet for this. I'm still figuring this out. Maybe you can, you can offer me some of your words on figuring this out uh, because we then move on into this, this concept that I've poked at last week, talked about again this week, uh, that they're uh, the next day, the next day, the next day. Uh, and, and John is setting up something that, that looks like the seven days of creation. He starts with in the beginning, uh, and then he seems to unfold the next day, the next day, the next day, uh, uh, days of creation. And then we get to chapter two on the third day. So presumably three days from when the previous encounter, the one with Nathaniel. Um, but, but, 
uh, there seems to be something more than meets the eye going on here. We don't want to be surface dwellers, so we're going to go. <laughs> we're going to dig down because the next time that turn of phrase is just a few verses later, where it says Jesus says, in, um, "Tear down this temple, and in three days I will build it up again." He's talking about himself, um, and he seems to be connecting this idea. We get to the end of chapter two, verse twelve, and what I, I'm convinced is the close of the epilogue, the, the beginning of the book, the introduction to the Gospel of John, where you've got, in the beginning was the Word, uh, and, and then these seven days of creation uh, culminating in the, the, the this wedding in Canaan. And, and now all, who Jesus is has been introduced by John. And the first thing that Jesus does, uh, according to John's retelling, is that he shows up at the temple and he cleanses it. There's some kind of strange connection between six jars, uh, six days of creation, uh, six days that we work, seventh day we rest. Uh, there's something going on there with that ceremonial washing imagery. And now Jesus comes into the temple uh, now that we, uh, and, he, and he cleanses it. He, 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 he chases everybody out who's been profaning it. Um, uh, John is inviting us to see who Jesus is. And, and then the irony that the, uh, the the leaders of the temple say, what sign can you show us to prove your authority to do all this? Well, John has just demonstrated that uh, through he has the authority, like he is the authority. He had the authority to speak the world into order and, and, and you dare question his authority to cleanse the temple. And they use this this awesome word, what sign? And John just used that word just back a few verses in verse 11 where he said this was the first of the signs through which he revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. Are, are you connecting the dots here? Are you seeing these threads that John is offering to us and is, is drawing together? Uh, uh, third day, ceremonial washing, prove your authority, the, the signs that are present. Um, and, and, and then we have that statement, verse 4, where Jesus says, my hour has not yet come. And I've given you some links, again on the sermon notes, that will invite you to, to explore this concept of the hour. And, and we could go back into the Old Testament. I just gave you links for the New Testament, in particular the Gospel of John. How does John use this idea of, of Jesus hour. Uh, and we get to uh, the hour of his glorification, which is, which is his crucifixion. Um, that is when he will be seen for who he is through his death, his burial, and then his resurrection, ultimately his ascension uh, back to the Father. So there's all kinds of threads here. And, and there's a bunch of things that, that um, I hope if you have a chance with your family or with your small group or your spouse or, uh, or if you're just reflecting quietly on yourself, um, there's, there's a whole bunch of layers where, where we can dig into this. One would be, um, uh, is it time to do some work on your marriage? Um, on the back of the sermon notes, uh, I asked that question, is it time to work on your marriage? Link one, link two. Click those links from the PDF file and they will take you to link one, um, uh, Family Life Canada. Uh, weekend, um, what do they call it? It used to be called Weekend to Remember. They call it something else now. Um, uh, fabulous, fabulous experience. Uh, link number two, focus on the family and some options that they have. Uh, there are tons of options uh, for you to work on your marriage because your marriage is about more than more than just the two of you, more than just you and your family. It's about, it's about more than... Uh, 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 the, the people who are around you that are influenced and affected by your marriage, uh, your marriage is intended to be a reflection uh, of, of God's love, uh, Christ's love for his church, Christ the groom, church the bride. Your, your marriage is about so much more. Uh, maybe you need to dig into this at uh, just a kind of a simple level of belief. John, again and again and again and again and again, is pleading with us to recognize who Jesus is, that he has the authority to command our lives. Is he commanding your life? Or, or is it, is he something that you fit in into to the conveniences, into the cracks? Maybe you show up on Sunday, maybe you don't, uh, to worship him. Uh, maybe you, you open the scriptures sometime during the week, or, or maybe you never open the scriptures. Um, uh, consider who it is, who he is, uh, who has invited you into relationship with himself and is calling you. And, and I would plead with you to respond. Find ways to come and see who Jesus is. 
Uh, that's probably enough for now. Uh, I'm Pastor Terry Lee. We are Okotoks Alliance Church. Uh, this has been the 10-Minute Coach. Bless you and bye for now.